Hi, everybody. So today's presentation is on troubleshooting tech problems. So focusing in on issues and resolutions. And this amazing presentation was made by Anissa. So today we will go over the following issues and how to resolve them, including Wi-Fi issues, pop-up advertisements, forgotten passwords, software updates, logging in, if you accidentally delete a file, how to fix that issue, and then finally finding files as well. To start off, slow internet and or Wi-Fi issues. So there may be some potential reasons that your internet is running slowly. For example, you may have too many tabs open at a singular time. You may be too far away from the router. You could have a cheap or old router. There may be too many people using the same Wi-Fi network at one time. There could even be poor weather conditions in your area that are affecting connectivity. Your device could have a virus or Bluetooth connected devices could result in your device running a little bit slower than usual. There are a few ways that this issue can be resolved. Firstly, getting a more safe and secure Wi-Fi router. For example, a Google Nest Wi-Fi, TP-Link Archer, or even a Griffin Tower. And there's a link to a website for best Wi-Fi routers of 2022 that one of the volunteers can send in the chat, or you can click on it once you receive a copy of the presentation if you wanna do some more research into finding a better router. You can also try moving physically closer to the router when you're trying to access the internet to really strengthen the connection. Or you can also focus on avoiding any viruses by not clicking on mysterious or unknown links. You can also reset your Wi-Fi box. So keeping your router plugged in, you want to find your router's reset button and this will be on the back or the bottom of the device. You can then use a paper clip or pen to click and hold down the reset button for 30 seconds. Then release the button and wait for the router to power back on. So this is the reset process if you're trying to do the reset for your router. Additionally, you want to avoid having more than seven people use the same Wi-Fi network at once and also call your internet provider for additional assistance because they may be able to help you troubleshoot as well. The next issue we will discuss is pop-up advertisements. As you can see on the screen, here are some examples of things that may be popping up. Sometimes it may just be one advertisement, but it could be multiple, which does become quite distracting and a large issue. There are a few different reasons that you are getting these ads. It could be a scam triggered by an unsecure website or link. There could be ransomware on your device, which is a software that hides on your device and then automatically displays advertisements while you are online. Or the browser you are using may contain many uncertified websites. There are a few different ways that this ad issue can be resolved. Firstly, remove any bad or inconvenient programs on your device. You can also download a ransomware scanner or scanners, which help to detect and remove advertisements. Some examples of these programs are Bitdefender, Zone Alarm, Zaspersky, and Acronis. You can even restart your device in safe mode to prevent any scams from taking place. And you can use free pop-up blocker extensions that are good to look into as they can prevent pop-ups and they're free. And I actually do have, I think, three different ad blockers on my, uh, attached to my Chrome and they work extremely well. I haven't received any ads since I added them and they're quite simple to add. Another issue you may be experiencing with your device in many different ways is forgotten passwords. 
So if you put in a password and it's incorrect or you don't even know what to put in, you may get a red message saying this is incorrect or you need to reset your password. Ways that this can be resolved. You want to always click on the forgot my password button to reset your password and then you can create a new one that you'll remember better. You want to always make passwords that are difficult for other people to guess, but not difficult for you to remember. And always make sure that you write it down and then keep it in a place that's safe and secure. And you don't want to write it on your computer because then you won't be able to see it if you're ever locked out of it. So you may be writing it down on a piece of paper and putting it in a safe or another safe space in your home, um, but usually writing it on paper is a good idea. And furthermore, you want to save all of your passwords and keep them handy. You want to have them written down, for example, as I was saying, in a notebook or something that only you have access to. You can even use password managers such as TrueKey, Dashlane, or LastPass as well. Another issue or thing you may be experiencing is software updates, and they come in different forms depending on which device you have. For example, the screenshot to the left is on a Mac device, and this is what it looks like when you need a software update, or this one is on a Windows device. So you'll see different screens depending, but it is the same concept. When and also why should you update your device? Updating your device to have the most current version of the operating system and software will add new features to your device and also remove outdated ones or things that may be slowing down your device. It can also help with bug fixes and allow your device to run a lot smoother and more consistently. And you may find that it even helps the speed at which your device is running it, which is a great way to fix an issue if you're having um, slowness problems. Updates are available in order to be downloaded, processed, and updated as an option for those who would rather update their device sooner than later. This is a tip that's recommended as it provides up-to-date quality fixes for your devices. So always do those updates, um, and you can even read through the information of the updates and see what will change, if that makes you feel more comfortable um, doing that reset and update. You may be wondering how to manage software updates. You want to get into the habit of updating your device so that it's at its most recent software to enhance bug fixes. If your computer needs updating, a pop-up should appear on your screen, letting you know of this and that a new update is available. You can also go to your system settings to find out if there are any new updates available. Um, for example, on Apple devices, if you go into settings, you will see beside the category software, you will see a little notification pop up, and then you can just click on that in order to see the information. To perform a software update, your device will typically need to be plugged in or above a certain battery percentage. And just a note is that the process could take a few minutes to an hour. So sometimes if it's just a quick update on your phone, it may take five minutes. But sometimes I've had experiences when I'm updating my computer, it's taken multiple hours. So just make sure maybe do it overnight so that it um, isn't wasting your time if it takes longer than expected. Just really manage your time with the updates. Now we will move on to talking about if you're having trouble logging in. These are some examples of having trouble logging in, whether it is on this platform, on Instagram, or on another site as well. There are so many different ways that you can have trouble logging in. And there are some different potential reasons for this issue. Firstly, the username you are using and or the password you are entering are incorrect, misspelled, or just um, you aren't putting in the right information for that specific site. If you are using the wrong password for a specific login, sometimes the caps lock key would be enabled, meaning that you're typing in all capital letters rather than just normal letters, which for case sensitive sites will tell you that you can't log in. 
The email that is being used is temporarily blocked due to security reasons. So if your email is disabled, then you'll have trouble getting in or the date set on your device is incorrect. So there are some different ways that this can be resolved. If your device is outdated, then you want to update all required cookies and data. You want to be sure that you're using the correct username or email, as well as password as your login information. And sometimes we simply make a mistake and we put in the wrong information for a given site. It's easy to get confused, so maybe just double check that. Make sure the email you are using is not blocked on any platform, so make sure that it's active and working. You can also make sure the caps lock key is not enabled, so you're actually typing in the correct passwords. And if it is still not working, you can click on the forgot password button to get a reset password link that will be sent to your email. And then, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, you can follow that forgot my password process of resetting it and then creating a new one that you will remember. Next, how to fix deleting something by accident. So whether you are using a touchscreen device or a keyboard, there are obviously going to be times where we accidentally delete things and we want it back. So how do you troubleshoot that? There are a few different ways that this can be resolved. If you delete a file, folder, image, etc., and you didn't mean to. If you're on a desktop or laptop, users can click on Control and Z to undo a previous action. This may be Command Z for you if you're on a Mac device. If you are on a device like an iPhone, then you would need to hold and press your screen and then a prompt will come up and you can click on Undo. You can also check your trash or recycling bin to recover any recently deleted items as well as they will remain in the trash for 30 days prior to being permanently deleted. Also on iPhones, if you accidentally delete an image, there's a section in your photo library called recently deleted. And this is the case for many other kind of photo applications. So you can just go into that folder and then click on recover photo. Now, you may have also forgotten where your particular files or data is being stored. And so you can do a restoration, um, but we are going to go over how to actually find where our files are. There are a few different ways you can resolve this. Firstly, if you are on a Windows device, then you want to open your device's file explorer and then search the name and or date of the file for a better chance of locating that specific file. And a lot of us have tons and tons of stuff on our computers. So it's good to make sure you name your files, things that you're gonna remember or descriptive titles so that you can easily search for them. Because if they're all named say file one, two, three, four, you're not gonna remember the contents of the file. So make sure you really give it a title that will help you to find it easily if you lose it. And this screenshot is showing where you can search in the top right hand corner on a Windows device by typing in um, some keywords that will bring up the file. For MacBooks, you can click on command space and then this will open Spotlight, which is a place where you can enter the name of the file that you are searching for. And then all of the results will appear in a list just below that. Then hold down the command key to view the path directory. When you are clicking down on the command key, you can click on a file and then open Finder at that file's location. You can also use the search bar in the Finder app if that's easier for you. So using Spotlight Search can be kind of complicated sometimes. So if you find it too complex, then you can just go into Finder and then there will be a search bar in the top right hand corner, similar to the Windows device, and you can just type in the keywords of the title there. Um, so I'm, I think um, something that may be helpful, helpful, sorry, is learning how to actually get a Chrome extension, um, which is an ad blocker. So this is something that has helped me so much in the past. Um, so I'll just walk you through how to do that. So you want to go to the Google Chrome web store. 
you can just search it up on your device and then you can go in and this is where you can get extensions, which is basically just kind of like applications attached to your Chrome browser. Um, for example, we've done ones on Grammarly. If you look to my top right corner, that's Grammarly and you can just see them up here. Um, and then I also have an ad blocker here and then more. Um, though we do have a presentation on this, so we can also share that resource for you if this is a new concept for you. But once you're in the Chrome Web Store, you have to have Chrome and you must be using Chrome in order to access it. You can search up ad blocker. And the purpose of this is just to, when you go onto sites, it will block ads from coming through. Sometimes you need to have multiple ad blockers in order to get rid of all ads. So I actually believe I may have two. Um, I only have one right now, but Adblock Plus is great. Um, and then once you see one that you like, so I, I have Adblock Plus here, um, and then there's also Ad Guard Blocker. And if you click on it, so I can't get it because my school doesn't allow me to have it, but you would usually be able to click on Add Extension here, or you can click on another one. And since I already have it added, I will have to remove it if I click on this button, um, but basically it is running whenever you go onto a website. Some websites may not work if you have an ad blocker running, so you'll have to disable it for that particular site. But other than that, it's really great at just filtering out all advertisements. And then once you have it added to Chrome, you can look to the top corner and find the extension. And then you can just see some additional information about it. So we can see that in total, it has blocked 127,000 ads. Um, and you can turn it off by clicking on this toggle and then it turns off. And then you can also simply turn it back on for this particular site by clicking the toggle again. And then you can see that it's activated. So this will definitely help you if you're having lots of pop-ups and distracting advertisements when you're on your computer. Alrighty, so um, I'm on a Windows device. So I guess what I can go over is how to uh, see if you have an update available for a Windows device. So what you could do is you could either search in the search bar, uh, Windows update, and then you'll notice the first two options are Windows Update Settings or Check for Updates. And you can just do Check for Updates. And then it should automatically open up the settings. And this should be checking right now at the moment. Oh, OK, there we go. So uh, you'll see that I have an update available and that is pending a restart. So I won't click on that now. but. If I want to see other optional updates, I could do that as well by clicking on view optional updates right here. And here, if I click on the little arrow next to driver updates, you see there's, there's a list of um, updates in case I have a specific problem. So uh, let's say one of your drivers are running a, li a little slower than usual. Uh, you could always revert back to um, an update or a previous update, which is uh, shown here. And you could just click on them and just press on download and install. But of course, um, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless uh, one of your drivers are pretty slow. But um, I guess another thing as well could be, let's see, there should be a troubleshoot option. Oh, here we go. So underneath the backup, you'll notice that there's a troubleshoot uh, tab. It should be indicated with the, I guess, a wrench-like icon. So if I click on this, there should be something that pops up. But um, you could do view troubleshooting history or additional troubleshooters. So for this case, I'll just view additional troubleshooters. And let's say I have a problem with the internet. I could just click on this and run the troubleshooter. And there's there's a whole list of, I guess, other problems in case you're having, I guess, power issues something like video playback to maybe even uh, something related to a Bluetooth device. Uh, you can run these troubleshooters and it should be uh, diagnosing the problem as you see, um, I guess, on your device as well. So I guess that's pretty much it for my portion. 
Thank you very much for listening. If you would like to learn this lesson with a Cyber Seniors Mentor, please go to the website or call the phone number to register for a one-on-one -on -one phone session. And additionally, there are also weekly tech drop-in sessions from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday. 